Today I'm going to give you my top 10 tips to help you choose the best medical school for you. My name's Cammie and I'm a second year medical student at the University of Birmingham. So choosing the right medical school for you is so important. You could be there for up to six years and there's so much to think about alongside just the course. If you're applying for postgrad entry, make sure you stick around till the end where I'll be going over some pointers on how your application might be a little bit different. So before we get started, let me know in the comments what you're most excited about when starting medical school. So number one, location. So do you want to be in a busy, bustling city or out in the countryside with lots of nice landscapes? So all around the country, there are all sorts of different cultures. So you need to think about what you'd like to get out of medical school. It's also to think about how far away you are from home. So are you happy with flying up to Scotland twice a semester, every semester? Do you want to be as far away from your parents as you can possibly be? Do you have a job at home that you'd like to keep on the weekends? So you need to come back every two weeks. You need to think about all these practicalities, how many times you'd like to go back home and how long it'll take you to get back home. An important point here is not to go to a specific university that's with or near a friend, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it is. This is your uni application, not your friend's application. So make sure that you're choosing exactly where you want to go and it's not influenced by anyone else. So traditional or integrated courses. So some students will want to jump straight in with the more modern integrated kind of teaching. So they'll want to start with clinical years straight away, be in hospital from day one and really get hands on with their clinical practice. Alternatively, there's the more traditional courses, which is where you have your preclinical years followed by your clinical years. So you're gonna learn all the science behind all the medicine before being able to apply it to real life situations. So both have their pros and cons. So ultimately it is up to you um, and how you learn best. So number three, teaching style. So you might have heard of PBL, problem-based learning. It's when um, you're in a group and you're given a problem and you have to work it out between yourselves. And obviously there is some guidance um, from staff, but ultimately it is quite self-motivated. Um, but some students really enjoy this and they find this is better for their learning. But other people think that it probably wouldn't work for them and maybe they prefer lectures and seminars and more kind of being given the information. Um, but this is less practical, of course, and well, less problem-based. So make sure you know how you learn best and there's no better way of doing this than whilst you're still at school. So make sure you experiment with different types of learning and see what works best for you. Intercalation is also a big thing to think about, um, but I'll be going into this more later on in the video. So number four, prosection or dissection. So dissection is when you're dissecting the body yourself um, and prosection is when a professional would do it either whilst the students are watching or they'll do it beforehand and then you'll have the specimens to look at um, afterwards. Both are really great ways to learn anatomy um, but not many medical schools are doing dissection nowadays so just make sure you look into which ones do which. So for example at UCL in years one and two you'll have two hours of prosection a week where you'll have a body between a group of eight of you and there'll just be staff moving around the room to help you. However, with dissection, although it is hands-on, you yourself are not a professional yet, <laughs> so um, it can be quite difficult to see the structures and to make out the anatomy. So that's where prosection is uh, might be better for some, in that the professional has already done it, so everything's so much clearer and a lot easier to make out. So number five, BMAT, UCAT and GAMSAT. So many of you will be sitting the BMAT or the UCAT. Uh, make sure that you check which universities require which exam as you need to make sure you're doing all of the ones that you have to be doing. So GAMSAT is for a few of the graduate programmes. So again, just make sure you check which ones require what. And then you can tailor your choices so that you might have a better chance of getting more offers. Number six, A-level subjects and grades. So not all universities require the um, usual maths, physics, chemistry, biology. So do check the websites, it'll all be on there under the entry requirements. 
So for example, what if you've resat an exam? Some universities don't like this, however don't worry, there are still a lot of options available to you. So make sure you check out the reset policies to see if you qualify and if you're still stuck, get in contact with the universities. Um, try to find out as much information as you can. So number seven, university life. University life itself is a massive part about going to university and there's so much more to just medicine. So it's a four to six year course, so you need to make sure that you can integrate into the student community where you're studying. A great way to find out more about uni life is to go to open days, so make sure you keep watching for some more guidance on open days, as I know it might be a little bit different um, with COVID-19 at the moment. Also check out the Medical Society, as unfortunately with your course you might not have the time to do the uni sports or the uni societies, as you know, practice, rehearsal might be at the same time as um, your placement or your lectures or whatever. Um, so the medicine society will usually put on societies and sports which are better suited to your timetable so you can balance both a little bit better. So different universities will have different cultures and each medical school is different. So I definitely recommend getting in touch with perhaps odd year students that might have gone to a school. They don't have to study medicine, um, but they can give you a good idea of what life is like at the university. So when I was applying, I was told um, it doesn't matter where you go, you'll get a medicine degree at the end of it, wherever you go, which is true for people who just want to go and do medicine. However, it definitely wasn't the case for me. Um, I really wanted to go to university where I'd have lots of opportunities um, to do all the things I wanted to do alongside my course. So if it's the same for you, then yeah, definitely try to find out as much information as you can from each uni before you apply. So number eight, intercalating options. So some universities will offer a year in intercalation, which is when you take a year out of your degree. This is usually after third year, although it can depend from uni to uni. So during this year, you can gain an extra degree, so an IBSC, in a different subject that's completely different to medicine, or it could be linked to medicine. But it's a great way of broadening your knowledge and making your CV even stronger for when you get out of medical school. There are loads of different options from different unis, so maybe if you're interested, have a look at the possible topics. There might be something that really, that really stands out for you. But just remember that some universities will require that you're in the top few deciles or something. So just make sure that you look at the conditions before you apply. So some unis might have this as a requirement, some it might be an option, and some it might not have it at all. So just make sure that you check on intercalation as well. So number nine, practical aspects. It can be exciting to look at medical schools, but remember not to forget about the more practical sides, such as living expenses. So obviously in London, it's gonna be a lot more expensive. You will get um, extra student finance for this, but remember that you'll also have to pay this back at the end as well. So it's just something to think about. So number 10, go to open days. This is so important, as it really gives you the best idea of what life is like at that particular university. Now I know that there might be changes or I I think virtual tours with um, all this coronavirus going on but do check um, the websites as there will be ways to look around the uni and to get a better idea um, again try to talk to as many students as you can that will definitely give you um, the best idea of what life is like remember to talk to lecturers and all different types of staff as well as just the students so a top tip for graduates, make sure you check the number of places in each of the courses. So Warwick, for example, will only take postgraduates, whereas other universities will have a certain number of spaces in their undergraduate course for postgraduates. So just make sure you have a look, do some research, and yeah, try to find out all the info. Uh, remember that Medic Mind is always on hand if you need any help with your application. So thanks for watching, best of luck with your application and I'll see you next time for our video on different course structures in medical school.